there, I'm Samantha with Culpeper Parks and Recreation and we are here today with a Crafty Creations video tutorial um, brought to you with the help of Culpeper Media and we are going to do a DIY or do-it-yourself sand art. But guess what? We're not going to use sand because where are you going to get that? It's not, you know, I mean, you could go to the beach, you could buy play sand, but I think you could take two things that I guarantee most of you have at home already, which is food coloring and table salt. Take those two items, join them together, and you've got play colored sand, i.e. DIY sand. So, um, what do you need? To set up for the uh, for the project, get yourself some salt of choice. This is just a pound of generic table salt. Uh, doesn't have iodide. Doesn't matter if it has or has not. I don't think it really makes much of a difference. You could use Epsom, rock, whatever you would like. Get yourself a bag. I'll just put this aside here. Maybe up here at the top, you can see what we have here, different colors. And this is also something that you could use pretty much immediately. Um, obviously, your salt is a compound that is going to absorb any moisture, so um, most moisture. So we're going to take and start by opening your bag. Not really going to go with any measurements. I'm going to say anything under a cup. Uh, the more the more salt you have in a bag, the more you're going to have to uh, manipulate the food coloring. But I would say, you know, this is maybe three fourths of a cup. Um, and I'm going to take some green food coloring. Liquid is best. You can also use liquid watercolor. That would work too. Start out by, ah, oh, this is not open. It's a new bottle. Uh, giving it a few drops or squirts in there. Take this off. It's a good thing I don't mind getting my hands dirty here. Let's see. Boop. Sorry to step away there for a moment. Had to pitch that into the trash so that it doesn't stain anything, but back to dyeing your salt. A few squirts there. You don't want to do a whole lot because it really doesn't take much. Um, take your bag, maybe get some of the excess air out, seal it. This uh, type of bag for this project personally I think is better than the Ziploc, or I should say the, yeah, the, the one that has the the tab on it um, just seems a lot better. And this has two um, seals here. And just start mixing the salt into itself. I like shake and bake, if anyone remembers that. Or anytime you're breading something, uh, coating something, um, you know, for whatever reason, I'm thinking of truffles, you know, chocolate truffles. You can take those and uh, have your sugar in the bag and then coat them. But this is pretty much all you're doing, is you're just going to make sure you keep putting it around. The other reason you don't want to go overboard with the amount of food coloring you put in there is, is moisture. 
Um, because if it's too moist, then it's just kind of, it loses that dry quality that's reminiscent of sand. Although, you know, sand is such a wonderful thing to hold in your hand, uh, especially when it's cool. But that's pretty much it. You've got your sand ready to go. Uh, it's just your dyed salt. We've dyed pasta. We've dyed rice. What else have we dyed? I think that's pretty much it. But this is something that, like I had said, you have salt, you have your dye, and you're pretty much ready to go. Um, this really does not need to dry. Let me just show you here. Take and pour out what we've done so far. And you could even, if you're going back and forth with different colors, you could use the same bag, pretty much. Um, you don't need multiple bags for different colors because if it's properly absorbed or mixed into the salt, you should be okay. Now look at that. There you have it. Now, of course, you don't want any open cuts or anything on your fingers or your hands. That might be a little painful um, to have that salt in there. Kind of that old saying, you know, rubbing salt into your wounds. Not kind of a pleasant thing to think about. But so we've quickly put together uh, different colored sand or sands and ideas abound with crafts. I mean, you could use these for sensory boxes, um, rainbow art. I have a bottle right here. Kids love sand art, particularly when you fill a bottle and you layer the different colors. Um, you can get really fancy and design something like, you know, something simple like say a sunrise, um, or I should say, a, well, sunrise or sunset could have your orange ball and then your sky all around it, but layers of the blue or layers, if it's a sunset, have your yellow sun and your red um, around that. But just for simplicity's sake and because it's fun, find yourself a funnel, makes it much easier. Got some spoons here and just start filling. and layering your color like this. And, you know, give it a shake, level it off. Make sure you don't have any lumps in there. That's obviously where the humidity got to it and it's just still has some moisture in there so it's clumping. Um, let me go ahead and put a little more in there and have fun with it. You could even take fun for the little ones, um, the pipettes, uh, and you could fill those, just cut the edges off and fill those and then just kind of squirt it in. Or, you know, take, I mean, a spoon and a funnel works best, I suppose. But as I always say, be creative. could maybe make it a little uneven so that you have a bit more curve to what you're doing. You can see I'm kind of making it uh, unlevel so that most of the height is on this side of the bottle. Okay, let's go with some blue. I'm gonna fill that there like so. So pretty much you just keep going and filling and filling. This is something that I think is excellent for little kids because just make sure you have, you know, bottles, jars, recycle your jars for like, you know, peanut butter, jellies, pickles, soups, pasta sauces, whatever you might have, uh, and save those for the kids to fill. Um, 
Where am I going to go next? Let's do this blue. It's always fun, especially at, uh, I don't know, whatever sort of school event, art class, festival, and the kids, it's like, you know, seeing them fill, you know, they want to try, it's, it's so funny, they want one of every color. Or you have the, the rare child that is, you know, very precise, just wants the one color or the two colors and it's always fascinating. Or doesn't want to mix them, or I should say doesn't want to layer them, prefers to mix. Anything goes. So keep on, keep on filling. I think that's probably sufficient, probably a little too much. Tap it. And look at that. Beautiful sand art with dyed salt. Awesome. I think this is a lot of fun. I could honestly do this all day long and not get bored. But let me show you one more thing um, that you could do. One of many things. I'm going to take a piece of paper here. It's just kind of a, I think it's actually mixed media paper. And just as a sample, I'm going to take something here. Well, maybe I'll use this instead. Larger piece. A quick tape resist. If you have some painter's tape, we've done this before, I believe, but go ahead and take. Let's do, just make some lines here. You really can do it any way you would like. Let me just move this up so you can see. Let's do, 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 do this way. And this here. And then maybe one here on the corner. Painter's tape. Again, something that's so multi-purposed. It's not just for taping the walls. Um, okay. All right. So what you can see here is we have going to make this go down like this. Clean edges. A little geometric abstract here. But go ahead once you have the paper and take Mod Podge. Love this stuff. Um, I think I've said before you can make your own. Some people say equal parts glue to water or more two parts glue to one part water, you experiment with it, but essentially that will work. Um, but this is, I think, something that is just so easy to buy and has that smell to it. It's, you know, maybe not necessarily a good thing in terms of sniffing glue, but it, it's kind of like when you were a kid, you think back to the smell of crayons or something from your childhood in art class that, uh, brings back those smells, that's memory. Um, so what you could do now is take one of these nifty sponge brushes, just get it nice and wet, and completely cover. I mean, you could just put it on the exposed parts, but you know, I'm going to do all of it here. Now you want to work quickly. Now we have our adhesive. Take, I'm going to put some here and just spread it out so that you have adequate coverage. You don't need a lot. This is probably too much, but just for the sake of having enough on there. And let's use this. Move this out of the way.
I'm keeping the colors separate just for dramatic effect. Kind of taking the back of the spoon here and putting it, uh, tamping it down. Let's use kind of like this aqua color. Let's use this here. Just a suggestion when you're trying to blend colors, you know, for example, if you want to make oranges, purples, things like that, blend the colors of the food coloring first and then apply that into your salt to color. Because if you just take the two individual, uh, it will work, but it doesn't really give you the, the effect you're looking for. All right, and let's use this yellow right here. Okay. All right. Obviously, you want to put down paper and make sure you have uh, a surface that you can get salty, and you certainly don't want to get dye on anything. All right. Take this. Try to only touch where the tape is. Give it a few taps. Now, ideally, you could give this a while to sit, but we're just here giving a quick tutorial, so I'm going to go for it. And then you want to very gently or delicately take your tape. While I say that, maybe I'll go from the other side here. try this and you're going to remove the tape to obviously see what is left behind I suppose I shouldn't have tucked the edges so securely but we got it off there and look at this whoops Take that off like this. We have this. You could also use the stickers, the letters, and you could make like a monogram. Uh, or you could take the tape and you could cut this into whatever shape. Okay. Almost done. We are down to one more. Love messy crafts. All right, let's see here. It's kind of like cooking. You know, you just want to get your hands into everything or it's spring gardening. For those of you that love to garden, just cannot wait to get your hands into that soil, especially in the spring because the soil is, is kind of damp and kind of cool. It's always fun. All right, so you could see that, you know, perhaps we could have given it a bit more time uh, to sit, but, you know, actually, I'm going to take this because I like this a little better. And then maybe, what color was this? Just because, put a little bit more there. Eh. Well, you could put, how about this? I'm just going to try to be a perfectionist here. A little more of this there. And then this here. But you get the point. So you can, as something, again, you could do at home with whatever you have. You could take paper and you could glue the colored salt onto your uh, paper for an art project. You could actually sketch out something. Again, I use the simple uh, example of uh, a sunset, you know, sun, maybe the sun setting over the ocean. That way you have the sun, you have the ocean, you can kind of blend these colors, the reds and the yellows and the oranges for that sunset look. Um, but that's pretty much it. There you have it. Do-it-yourself sand art. So 
give this a try and let us know what you think and we'll see you next time. Stay crafty.